C and D have a little bit more complexity that we need to talk about, um, but they're going to start out the same. So we're going to start by moving our constant term over. So we get 6x squared plus 12x equals 48. Now here's where things get different. Um, notice we have a 6 in front of the x squared, so we need to factor that out. Okay. Just the 6, don't factor out any x's. So that's going to leave us with x squared plus 2x. Okay, so if you have that a value, make sure you get it factored out. Now, we're going to continue the same process. We're going to take that middle term and divide it by 2 and square it, which is a 1. So I'm going to add 1 there. But here's where things change. That's not really a 1. Because notice, if you distributed the 6, if that 6 gets distributed everywhere, 6 times 1, that's actually a 6. Okay, I added a 6 to that side, which means I have to add a 6 over here. Okay, so if you have factored out an A, make sure you multiply those together, and that's what you're adding over on this side. Okay, now that we've done that, just leave that 6 out there, it's fine. We need to factor the side. It's always going to be a perfect square. We're looking for numbers that multiply to 1 and add up to 2, which of course are 1 and 1. And over on this side, we get uh, 54. Okay, don't take the square root yet. Now we need to divide by that 6 so we can get it out of there. I'm going to continue the problem up here. So we have x plus 1 squared equals 9. Now it's time to take the square root of it. So that's x plus 1 equals plus or minus 3. And our last step, we are going to subtract 1. So x equals negative 1 plus or minus 3. Now, when we did a and b, we left our answer like this because we had i's in the problem. Don't leave your answer like this, OK? Actually, give me the two solutions, um, negative 1 plus 3 is one of your answers, so 2, and negative 1 minus 3 is your other answer, so negative 4. So those are your two answers, 2 and negative 4. Okay, let's do D. It's a very similar problem. Um, oh, they already have the constant term moved over. That was nice. So now what we need to do is we have this 8x squared. We're going to need to factor out that 8. Don't factor out any x's. So that's x squared plus 2x. And the 42, we haven't done anything to that. Just leave it. So now we're going to take that middle term. We're going to divide it by 2 and square it, uh, which is just 1. So we're going to add 1. That's not really a 1, because remember, it's getting multiplied by 8. It's really an 8. So if I added 8 to that side, I need to add 8 to this side. Okay, so now I have 8. We're going to factor this thing. It's always going to be a perfect square. So numbers that multiply to 1 and add up to 2, it's going to be x plus 1. And this side is 50. And then we're going to divide both sides by 8. So we get x plus 1 squared, because those cancel. Um, 80, oh, sorry, 50 over 8. 8, um, that reduces. I'm just going to reduce that. Divide them both by 2. That's 25 fourths. That's okay. We can do that. All right, we'll take the square root of both sides. Come up here for the next part. So I get x plus 1 equals plus or minus. Let's see. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 4 is 2. My last step, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So we get negative 1 plus or minus 5 over 2. Now, actually, tell me what those answers are. There's no i in this problem. So negative 1 plus 5 over 2 is going to be 3 halves. And negative 1 minus 5 over 2 is going to be negative 7 halves, I believe. Okay, those are the two answers.